the second to last chapter of the book of Hosea, chapter 13. Daber Ephraim Ritate Nasahu Bi Israel Sham Babaal Bayamot. So when Ephraim spoke with, with righteousness, then he became great in Israel. Yoshua Benun was from the tribe of Ephraim. Yeravam ben Nevat, the, the first northern king, was from Ephraim. However, through Baal, through idol worship, he became guilty, and so he died. Viata Yosifu lachato, viasula hamasecha, mikaspam kitfunam atzabim asecha rashim, kulo lahem hemorim zovche adam, agalim yishakun. But what do they do? They keep on sitting. They're adding on to their other sins, and they've made. Masecha. Masecha is the word that's used by the Egel Zahav. Asulahem Egel Masecha is the way that the golden calf is described in the book of Shemot. And of course, we've talked about many times that the first sin of the northern kingdom, the first major sin, is Yeravam ben Nevat's placing of the two golden calves, one in Bethel and one up in Dan. And so it's not surprise again, over and over again. We talked about it at the time, how uh, with Yeravam, his his kids have names similar to the names of Aaron, uh, like their their names are similar to the names of Nadav and Avihu. So there, there certainly there's a connection that's being made between those two uh, people. Of course, Aaron does tshuva, and Aaron repents, and Aaron becomes the high priest, and his children afterwards. Yeravam, not so much. So they make these molten idols, uh, images, idols. Uh, you know, and they use their best people to do it. They have people who have great wisdom and great, they use great artisans. Okay. And that's what they do. Therefore, there'll be like the morning clouds, like dew, like shafe whirled away from the freshing floor and like smoke from a lattice. And this goes back to, I believe it was the second chapter, was the fourth chapter, I don't remember which one, earlier in the book, where uh, B'nai Yisrael, the northern kingdom, Ephraim, has this statement that says, let us do tshuva, we'll be like the rain coming down and, and, and you know, penetrating into the, into the grass and we'll, 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 you know, our tshuva will be full. And God says, you're like a, a fleeting cloud. You're like dew. Your tshuva is going to be for one minute. It's not going to be true repentance. And so here, God is saying, that's what they're going to be like. Right, they're going to be destroyed. There's something that's just going to be like shafe whirled away from the threshing floor, like smoke from a lattice. It smokes a little bit and then it's gone. The dew so early gone. But I, I am, I am God who took you out from the land of Egypt. Right, you've never known a real God but me. You've never had somebody else. There was no Moshiach. There was no somebody else who helped you. And again, right, we said many times, the cycle over and over again. B'nai Israel sins and God sends them after they, right, they sin. And then um, their uh, nation attacks them. And then there's no atheist in the foxhole. So they call out to God and God then sends them a messenger. It's all done during this generation. The 10 tribes will be exiled. I knew you in the desert in a land of Taluvot, not exactly clear what that word means um what what you know the one of the explanations says it's a, a place of uh, uh deprivation uh a place of um you know rashi says it's from the words tail and sheovin that it's a heap where you could not find anything good uh, it's a place of starvation a place of uh of thirst it's a place where um you could not have survived without my um w- without my intervention kimar itam vayispau savu vayaram libam alkain shekhuni when you when right when they grazed they were sated when they were sated they grew haughty and so they forgot me we have this back in the uh, hazinu the song of moshe where it talks about bene israel they got fat by shman yishurun Right, they got fat and they forget God, and so here too, So I became like a lion to them, like a leopard on the road to Assyria. 
Siriu comes and destroys the ten, the, the uh, northern kingdom, the ten tribes. Ef Geshem Kedov Shakul Vekra Skor Libam Va Ochleim Sham Kilavi Chayat Hasada Tiv Tivak Aim. Like a bear, a dove is a bear who's robbed of her young. I attack them. We know bears, they usually stay away, but uh oh, if you get near those baby, the, 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 the cubs, that mother bear, watch out. They rip open the casing of their hearts. I will devour them like a lion. The beasts of the fields will rip them apart. Shichetcha Yisrael kivi be'ezrecha. You're, you're done, Israel, because there's nobody else who will help you but me. And we know, sadly, that seems to be so much very often in Jewish history. Nobody was there to help us. Ehi malkecha efov yoshiacha becholorech v'shovtecha asher amarta t'nali melech v'sarim. Where is your king? Who will save you? Where are your sarim? Where are your shoftim? Where are your judges? Where are your officers? You said, give me a king and officers. That's what you said, going back all the way to the book of Shmuel, when B'nai Israel asked for a king so they could be like the nations around them. And of course, God's response there to Shmuel, Shmuel is offended. They're rejecting me. And excuse me, God says back, you're not, they're not rejecting you. What they're rejecting is me, God says, because I'm supposed to be their king. So God says, go find your king. Let him protect you. Let him lead you in battle. It's not going to happen. God says, I gave you kings in my anger and take them away in my wrath. Okay, and that, the right, and God actually, that's, that's similar to what God says to Shaul generally, where God takes, in a sense, the kingship away from Shaul while he's still alive. And uh, Shaul goes into those black periods, if you remember from the book of Shmuel, and David, uh, that's when uh, Shmuel goes and he uh, anoints David as king. As far as God's concerned, David is already king, even though he's not sitting on the throne. Saror Avon Ephraim's funa chatato. Ephraim's guilt is bound up. His sin is stored away. Chevle yo leida yavo lo. Huven lo chacham ki eit lo yamod bimishpar banim. Right? The pangs of child of, of childbirth, the chevle yolda. Right, but his the child the child will not be wise because there's no time to survive when the woman is on the birth stool. Mishpar is the the birth stool, so right the the place where she she gives birth. The, the child's not going to to survive. Miad Shaul Efdain, mi mavet egalem from Shaul, I will save them. Ehi dvarecha mavet ehi katva Shaul nochem isater meinai. I will redeem them from death, from the plagues, from pestilence. And eventually God says, I will redeem them. I will not take revenge. Ki hu bein achim yafri, yavo kadim ruach Adonai midbar olev, v'yevoshu mikoro, v'yevoshu mikoro, v'echarav mayano, hu yishse otsar kol kli chemda. Because there's going to be a flourishing. God, right, God is going to bring a wind, a Ruach Kadim will come from the desert uh, and right, it will plunder the treasures, every last object. And so here we have this, this uh, prophecy of destruction that's going to come to B'nai Israel, uh, or destruction that's in a sense you could say you wonder whether this has already been done afterwards. After the ten tribes have been exiled, Hosea, who's living through this very difficult time, and part of it, he, you know, he, he goes. Oftentimes, it's more of the idolatry. He talks about the idolatry. Idolatry. It's early in the chapter, but here, at least in part, what God is saying and what uh, what Hosea is saying is he's going back to the idea of the king. You distanced yourself from me. You wanted a king to run to rule you. You thought that others could could be together with you. And earlier in this book, and of course to, in the book of Yeshaya, we have it over and over again. The contemporaries. You thought that you would make alliances, that other people would help you. There is no Moshiach. There's nobody to provide you salvation other than me, says God. And because of that, you are going to be like prey on the road to destruction.